1997, Las Vegas developer and casino owner Steve Wynn bought a Pablo Picasso painting called The Dream for $48.4 million, man. Can you imagine for normal people like you and me, $48.4 million for just a painting? Can you imagine this? By the time 2007 rolled around, the painting was worth $139 million. Wow, man. And Steve Wynn decided to cash in, and he sold the painting to the highest bidder, which happened to be a friend of his, another billionaire, Stephen Cohen from, from New York Hedge Fund, fund founder. So, Days before he shipped the painting, he wanted to show it off one last time, did Steve Wynn. So he gets a, a Renoir, he gets one of his Matisse's, and he, he gets this Picasso painting that, that he's got a contract signed on. And sets, uh, sets them up and invites some friends of his over, some important friends of his, a popular Hollywood screenwriter, Barbara Walters was there. And Steve Wynn was known for being very expressive with his hands when he talked, and he also had a an eye disorder that causes his peripheral vision to not work basically. So you can see where this is going. So he's talking with his hands and he's he's going on about this painting and he boom, he elbows it and he hears whoosh, rip. He punctured a silver dollar size hole and a $139 million piece of art, causing the value to plummet. Gets on his friend Stephen Cohen, talks about it, and they decide to invalidate the sale. $40 million later, Steve Wynn received back his restored painting, The Dream. Yes, he did have insurance on it, and he paid some restorationists to do their work on this painting and get it back to like new, possibly. And you know what? They must have, because just seven years later, Stephen Cohen bought this painting. Yes, the same one who had tried to buy it years earlier for $139 million. Bought this painting that had been previously damaged for $155 million, making it the, at the time, highest transaction for a work of art. Why am I telling you this story? Because as Christians, as people, as we live our lives, we sometimes find ourselves in the position of that painting. We have value, things are in our lives, we have grown them and, and we have, have uh, perhaps have a family, we have this future that we're working towards and all of a sudden something happens and we are punctured and our dream, if you will, has a hole ripped in it. And our value, we feel, plummets. Maybe the marriage that we had falls apart. Maybe our family is fractured as a result. Maybe our, our just, uh, I know when I burned out uh, about three years ago and started battling depression, uh, my personal value and the way I saw myself and my frame of mind as I would go through each day had, was devalued. I, I wondered if I would ever uh, go through life with a clear mind and a, and, a, and, a, and a heart that was really connected to God. I wonder if I would ever be able to you know, uh, function in ways that I had been used to functioning. And I was a pastor and it was important that I, that I, I function with a healthy frame of mind and I, I couldn't do that anymore. Um, and I wondered if I would ever have my value again. And perhaps you wonder that as you have had your life punctured. And as I mentioned in an earlier video about Satan being the accuser of the brethren who comes at us with railing accusations and he will do that when you are punctured, and he will tell you, Satan will say, you will never be the same again. You, you, you will never be okay again. You are beyond repair. Uh, your family will never respect you again. You will never have a ministry again. God doesn't really love you anymore. And he will begin to rail on us. And at that time, uh, we certainly feel we've lost so much value. But I use this story about this painting to illustrate, however, the great restoration redemptive and healing power of Jesus Christ. Because just as restorationists were able to restore this painting and 
not only allow it to retain its former value, but to even appreciate its value. Jesus Christ came to do the same for you and I. The Bible says Jesus didn't come for the people who were well. Jesus said, I have come for the sick. The well do not need a physician. So if you've been damaged, know that Jesus came for you. Not only that, Jesus, when he's making his entrance into society, uh, grabs scroll and, and reads from Isaiah and, 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 and says that this is true of me. He says, I have come to bind up the brokenhearted. I have come to heal them that are bruised. I've come to set free the captive and the blind. I've come to give them, help them recover their sight. Doesn't that sound like a restorer to you? But where do you fit in today? Where, where do you, where, which parts of your life need restoring? If you've been punctured, if you've been ripped, if your value has gone down, put your life in the hands of the restorer. This is why Jesus had crowds that flocked to him so often. Why? Because there was healing in his hands. There was healing in his words. There was redemption in his message. And at the cross, he paid and sealed and came up out of that tomb on the third day, uh, m completing a, a great act of redemption for you and I to capitalize on. So whatever, whatever aspect of your life has been punctured, uh, know today that there's hope and redemption in Jesus Christ. Just call upon him. Run to him. Don't let the accuser of the brethren continue to tell you that you do not have value. Hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, if you're watching it on my website and you're not on my email address, drop your email address in the opt-in box so you do not miss future encouraging content. In the meantime, be encouraged, my friend.